I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I get a lot of questions from people asking what they can do to work here, how they're going to be able to work in Nicaragua. And I've got a really quick, simple answer for you. You don't want to work in Nicaragua. But why, you ask? Well, that we're going to get to right after that bump. All right, let's dig into this. Why do you not want to work in Nicaragua? Well, let's start with a few presumptions. We assume you're coming from North America, United States, Canada, maybe Europe, maybe Australia, New Zealand, a place that has a much higher income rate than Nicaragua. Let's just start with that assumption. If you're coming from a place that is abjectly poor, you're coming from Haiti, you're coming from Central Africa, you're coming there, you're coming from the Philippines, some place that has an extremely low income, and you're hoping to move to Nicaragua as a higher income country, okay? I understand that's gonna be a different case. Maybe you do want to find some way to try to, well, I don't know, but 99.9% .9 of my audience or better is either already in Nicaragua, and that doesn't apply to you, or you're coming into Nicaragua and you are coming from a much higher cost country where you have the right to work. Now, before we dig into why you don't want to work, there's a simple, really important fact here is that you don't have the right to Nicaragua as a work. You don't have the right to work in Nicaragua, period. It's never going to happen. But Assuming you did, there's this underlying feeling that so many people have that they're going to want to seek a job here or they have to find some way to work from Nicaragua. And of course, wanting to keep working. We're not saying you have to retire. We're not saying you have to give up working, anything of the sort. No one has suggested such a thing. It's that you can't get a job in Nicaragua. You cannot act as a Nicaraguan employee but that's in other videos. We wanna talk about why you wouldn't want to. Let's assume that you were allowed to. Let's assume you got permission to do so. Why would you not want to do that? So let's dig in. What is minimum wage here in Nicaragua? Minimum wage is $200 per month, and the average wage is much closer to $400 a month. Those are numbers you have to work with. Of course, there's someone who does incredibly well, is very wealthy, and of course, your money goes much farther here, so these are, as much as people sometimes struggle with it. You're coming from North America, you're like, how is it even plausible to live on that? But when you come here and see what prices are like, what lifestyles are like, how people actually live, yeah, it's really, it's still amazing that people can live on that, but it's understandable. It doesn't become the bizarre thing that it seems. Like Americans often will say, that's not possible. But when you come here, you're like, oh, that's completely possible. Not good, but possible. And then you understand a bit better. But you have to understand that these are the numbers that you're working with. And if you're coming into Nicaragua, you have lots of disadvantages compared to a Nicaraguan worker. You don't know the market. You don't know how to do things. You probably don't speak the language. Even if you speak Spanish, you don't speak Nicaraguan Spanish. You don't have familial connections. You don't have uh, working connections, you don't have educational connections, you're lacking a bunch of things. So you have a big disadvantage in most fields. And you probably don't know how things are done. So in some fields, it may just be a real minor disadvantage. In others, it may be a pretty big one. If you're coming here to go into HVAC, or you're coming to go into plumbing, or you want to go into, you know, who knows how many things. You may not be familiar with the vendors that we have here. You're not familiar with the way that things are done here, how customers expect you to interact and so forth. You could be at a pretty major disadvantage. In some cases, like house construction, you could be at a massive disadvantage. So it's important to understand that whatever Nicaraguans make, you are likely to be worth slightly less in an identical field. So if a Nicaraguan doctor is making X, you would make probably just a little bit less because you just have fewer advantages than they do. They also have an easier time getting clients, interfacing with clients, having bedside manner, and so forth. And in the case of doctors, bedside manner is a much bigger thing here than it is in the United States. They would also expect you to probably go through some training to get into some of those fields if they were to allow you to work in them. So understanding that these are the ranges. Now let's talk about what some higher end fields make. If you're looking at becoming, say, a doctor, someone mentioned this just last night on the live stream. We just did a six hour live stream, by the way, last night. That was pretty awesome. Thanks to everyone who joined. We tried to do that every Thursday night. And sometimes we sprinkle them in other times as well, like we did this week. We've done a lot of lives and we're getting really good feedback on them. A lot of participation. That's been amazing. Watch for those. Uh, make sure you hit that bell down there and subscribe so you're getting alerts when they come up. Anyway, we, uh, uh, someone said, well, what if I came down and worked as a doctor, right? Coming from North America, you're used to doctors being a very high income field. Here in Nicaragua, the education to become a doctor happens much faster and is much less costly. Often you can do it for free and working in the field, while it does pay far higher than many other fields, it still pays less than say an English speaking call center. So people are making more money answering the phone for DoorDash than they often are working as a doctor. If you go to the hospital, the private hospital, pay out of pocket to see a doctor. That consultation, we just did this, so this is a real number at a high-end private facility, $10.02.
that's how cheap it is to go see a doctor. Well, if that's what a doctor's bringing in in a private clinic, in a hospital, so they got to pay for the hospital, they got to pay for the nurses, they got to pay for all the the building and the traffic, expensive downtown property, and they're only bringing in ten dollars for a consultation. There's no way to make a lot of money as a doctor. That means at most five dollars is going to the doctor and that would be a stretch in normal math we would expect at most one quarter of the money coming in to go to the doctor let's say it's three dollars let's see they can say they can do four consultations per hour that is only twelve dollars per hour to pay and then they have to pay taxes on that and everything and of course twelve dollars per hour isn't a very good salary here but in many cases we see doctors in most practices earning sub one thousand dollars a month here in nicaragua because they can make uh they can get over a thousand in a call center. And so making only that much gives you an idea. Why would you want to work at those rates? So if you're coming to Nicaragua and you're saying, I want to work there, you are essentially saying that you want to work somewhere between $200 working. And here full time is six days a week, 48 hours a week. So think about $200 for 48 hours of your labor. Uh, and that's per month. So 48, it's actually getting really close to 200 hours of labor. You're talking about earning $1 an hour. That's very roughly what minimum wage is here and getting up to a high end of about five dollars per hour if you were a skilled doctor or working in a call center or something like that again you're not allowed to do any of these things but if you were why would you want to do this if you're coming from north america you're coming from europe you have access to work in markets that pay so dramatically higher so let's look at the united states as an example for practical purposes we'll say that the minimum wage in the united states is ten dollars in some fields it's higher in some fields it's lower but it's you're really going to struggle to actually get below $10 for someone paying you as an American laborer and relatively similar for a Canadian laborer, right? Well, using $10 American as the number. If you're doing that, right, and you're working online at that number, you can earn the minimum wage here in Nicaragua in just 20 hours. That's one half of one week of working or two really good 10 hour days, which Americans are often used to working 10 hour days. So you only have to work two days in a month to meet a minimum wage for a Nicaraguan. And remember, you don't have to pay taxes on that. So that's really $200 you have to work with. Of course, you don't want to be living here on $200 a month. That's not a goal. The point is if you're comparing to working a local job. So no Nicaraguan wants to be working in Nicaragua. They do it because they don't have access to other markets. The moment they have access to other markets, that's what they will take. And if they can work online and get jobs elsewhere, that is massively advantageous to them. So the same thing goes for you. No Nicaraguan would understand why you would want to come from the United States where you have, or, or Canada or Europe, and you have these huge, huge income possibilities, even for entry-level jobs, and come to Nicaragua and take a job from a Nicaraguan to earn so little money. Your, your absolute maximum potential is so tiny. Now, of course, if you're investing in a business, in theory, you can make higher, but that's a very similar financial discussion, which we'll have in a different video. But if you're just trying to take a job, as so many people are, they, you know, a lot of people say, can I come down and be a doctor? Can I come down and be a truck driver? Can I come down and be whatever, that whatever job they've, they've done or they want to do, wherever they're coming from, can they recreate that here in Nicaragua? And technically, the job may exist. There may be people who do that job, but does it make any sense for you to desire to do that? Unless you're just looking to volunteer, in which case, yes, you can volunteer and do things, but that probably doesn't make too much sense. If that doesn't sound like you, then obviously that's wrong. But so if you're looking to come down and your goal is to pay your bills, stop and think. You must speak a language that gives you access to working in your home market. You must have some way to work online. I know I can't tell you what jobs are online. This is, you know, a lot of people ask that, well, what job am I supposed to do? I say, I don't know. I don't know what job you could do if you weren't online, right? I don't know what job you would go do in your home country. I don't know what range of jobs you would enjoy. I don't know what skills you have. I, no one can answer that, right? Maybe if you sat down with a job counselor and a whole bunch of things, like maybe you could come up with something, but these are the kinds of things that you train all the way through school for to help you identify what jobs would be interesting to you, right? So sit down, if this is something you want to do, uh, sit down and start internalizing. Wow, what kind of things do I enjoy doing? What things do I like to do? What kinds of things would I like to explore doing? What kind of things have I felt I couldn't get into? Let's just pick something and say, let's say you're a truck driver. I know we got some truck drivers and that's not something you're going to be able to bring to Nicaragua. There's just no way. So you're a truck driver and you say, well, what can I do? I feel the need to keep working either that you, you just feel compelled to work. You don't want to retire, or maybe you have a financial situation and you just need to continue to have an income. Doesn't have to be big, but you need to have something coming in. Okay, great. So you desire to work from Nicaragua, not in Nicaragua. Perfect. And now you have to make an adjustment. Driving truck, obviously you can't do online. So what can you do? Well, maybe you have an interest in, let's say, graphic arts. Well, you could be a graphic artist. 
So right now you say, well, I've been driving truck. I haven't been trained in that. Well, great. Start taking classes, start practicing, start thinking about what it would take to get an entry level job in graphic arts, right? So this is important. Like in, in, if you were staying in the United States, you would need to have an advanced job to equal the pay that you're getting in some other field. You're a truck driver, you make good money. You want to become a graphic artist. Well, it's going to be really hard to earn similar money as a graphic artist to what you were making as a truck driver. Even an entry level truck driver will probably out earn a pretty senior graphic artist. So that's a very tough transition to make. But if you're coming to Nicaragua, your amount of money you need to live on is so much less. And you're looking at p competing positions, right? Making two, three, maybe $400 a month as a truck driver here, that makes no sense. But if you're an entry level graphic artist working for a company in the United States, for a company in Canada, for a company in Australia, whatever, and you're making minimum wage, let's just say $10 an hour, well, it's it's gonna take very little time without even having to leave home, without having to invest in anything big, maybe a computer, and being able to do that work from home in the comfort of your home and, and not have to commute, not have to do all those things. You can earn a higher rate by doing an entry level in some field that you're working your way into. You could test out a few different fields and do that, but even entry level work in expensive markets is going to pay not just a little bit more. We're not talking about making 50% more. We're talking about making 10 times more, 20 times more, right? If 200 to 400 is what you reasonably could be earning here if you're working a job here, which of course you don't want to do, but this is what people are saying, right? They say, well, I have to work there. I, need, I feel compelled. I must get a job in Nicaragua. It doesn't make sense. That money is so low that if you worked and did an online job, a completely different field. It could be teaching English. It could be graphic arts. It could be programming. It could be something you've never considered doing. It could be something you always wanted to do. You could try a bunch of different things. But if you're working an entry level at $10 an hour and you're working the standard 168 hours a month, that's $1,680 that you're bringing in per month and you're only working 40 hours a week, you don't have to worry about overtime, you don't have to worry about taxes, right? That is tax-free money. And is that is that gonna allow you to live like a king? No, but is it gonna allow you to live comfortably here? Absolutely, you can buy a house, buy a car, go out to eat, have fun, and only work 40 hours a week. Start earning more, move up in your field, and maybe a lot of those fields aren't gonna pay minimum wage for starting, maybe you can make more. Absolutely fantastic. What if you're making $15 an hour? Well, now maybe you wanna just live better, have all that extra money, that's $2,400 a month. But what if you don't feel like doing that? Well, maybe you could trim back your hours, only work 130, 140 hours a month, and just enjoy living on a smaller budget, but relax and, uh, and, and have more time to enjoy Nicaragua. That's fantastic too. But in all these cases, you're getting this additional income and more flexibility by working that remote job. So at the end of the day, regardless of whether you are allowed to work in Nicaragua or not, the idea that you want to indicates that there's a misunderstanding of what it would mean to work in a new country. Right. If you're moving from the U.S. to Germany and you're like, well, how am I going to pay my bills? I have to have a job in Germany because what else? Am I? Yeah, that's a completely different animal. You're talking about a lateral move between two very expensive countries. But when you're talking about coming to Nicaragua, that doesn't work at all, partially because there's an employment crisis, partially because it's a very low income country, partially because it's a very low uh, uh, cost of living country. You put those things together and there's no situation that we've ever encountered where a person coming from North America, Europe, Australia, whatever, would ever actually understand what it means to want to work here and want to work here. The two have never actually, it's always a just, it's an assumption. It's much like when people say, well, I need residency. You say, why do you think you need residency? And then they'll list item after item that are just myths, right? We get this all the time. And, and understood, right? It, those myths are common. You hear them everywhere. They may apply to other countries for sure. It's not like they're made up. It just doesn't apply to Nicaragua. And people forget that this is a, you know, a sovereign country that's independent and things are different. But when it comes to these, these things with jobs, we often have this, you've always been taught, you show up in a place, you go move to a new state, you go find a job. You move to a new city, you go find a job. So why would moving to Nicaragua be different? Because every factor is different. And it doesn't make sense because you have this advantage in the place that you're coming from that is so massive that it outweighs any possibility of what you could do locally regardless of what you're allowed to do thanks for joining me like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller and as always i will see all of you tomorrow and do me a favor one of these uh videos that pops up on the screen if you would click on one of those that'd be great if these do not pique your interest scroll down find one of the videos that they recommend down below on the side or whatever on the platform that you are and click on one of those